Hello, Kevin. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for making this documentary, or at least contributing to it. Yeah. I think it's fascinating to go behind the scenes on something as grand as this. And uh, what was interesting, though, is it all seems quite... It's, it's all people just working hard. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, I, uh, you know, for people who don't quite get theatre to some degree, but people who don't really go, I've, we've sort of made the movie partly for them. We've also made the movie for people who love theatre and love to go to the theatre. Um, and I guess it's, it's, it's a, on this particular scale, it's a pretty unusual opportunity to go behind the scenes and to see what it's like to be uh, an actor in a company and to put together a part and to do classic work on a big grand scale uh, across so many countries and cities around the world. And, you know, it's rarely done anymore. So I'm really glad that we've decided, yeah, let's, let's capture what this experience is like. It must have taken it out of you as well, because it's actually, by the end of it, you're quite exhausted watching it, <laughs> just because of the repetition. And I've always wondered how a stage actor is able to continue to do that over, how many shows, 300? Or? Well, I mean, we did about, we probably did a little more than 200 performances in the, in the course of the, the 10 months that we did Richard III. But I guess it's a little bit like, I always like to make the analogy of sports, because that's something people can sort of understand. Like, if you were to say to somebody, well, isn't it boring going out and doing the same thing every night? You know, it's the same words. And I go, well, but if you went out every night and you played eight nights of tennis, yeah, it's the same rules, but it's a different game every time you're out on that court. Mm -hmm. You're working on a different part of your game. Your partner's working on a different part of their game. And the act of being watched changes it. So it's always new. It's always fresh. It's always you're always like extending yourself and trying new things and going new places and it's always different because the audience is responding differently. So in fact, it's never the same. Is there ever a fear that you have a Shakespeare nerd in the front row who's analyzing the language? Because the language is so precious, you think if you just skip to words, there's probably some real geeky yeah, The truth guy. is sometimes like we have our student seats are always the front row and so sometimes like young actors will come with the script and you just like put the script down just enjoy just put it down um, yeah we definitely get some um, nerdy people in the front row and when it comes to learning the language this is quite a childlike question but you do watch uh, segments of the show in the documentary and, and you sit there wondering I don't care how many years you gave me or, or anyone perhaps is it like a muscle that you have to kind of exercise in order to because that very first line <laughs> if you for some reason had a blank that's it you're you're done. Yeah, it is true that when you when you forget in Shakespeare, and I often forgot, and I would often make up things just to continue talking. Um, weirdly, I was able to end things in iambic pentameter, which is always very odd to me and the rest of the company that I would still somehow make make it you know the right rhythm. What regular uh, language you turn uh, Shakespeare? I would in? completely. I mean, sometimes you just say your brain is not working and your tongue is not working, and something comes out of your mouth that is not even remotely close to what Shakespeare wrote. Uh, and it makes no sense, but oddly it sort of times out rhythmically. Um, and I actually, I think it was the first day of rehearsal that I actually said the wrong line. The very first line of the play I said from another play that starts also with now. Um, Good. And, and everyone thought I was making a joke, but I was <laughs> actually just nervous. Kevin Spacey, the professional. <laughs> I was really nervous. Um, but I also think the great thing about Shakespeare, too, is even even for people who don't are not familiar with the the language in, in the sense that it sounds so different and it's, um, it's so new for a lot of people is that it doesn't even matter if you don't really understand the words because Shakespeare made up about 3,000 words, number one. And I think that if you can follow the story and I think it's, he's so clear about relationships and stuff that it's actually kind of easy. Like if you just sort of like ease into it and let 10 minutes go by, it'll actually start to wash over you and you, you don't really have to worry about it after a while. You can sort of just follow the play. And you kind of tune your ear to it as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Do you see parallels uh, between Richard III and any Hollywood bosses? Uh, you know, big producers, big ball busters? Um, no, I did a movie um, many years ago called Swimming with Sharks in which I played a studio boss. And, and at the time, I remember people were telling me who I was basing my character on, but I'd never actually met any of those people. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there is... There are some, you know, ball busters uh, in Hollywood who have incredible reputations as being absolute witches to work with, but I'm kind of lucky. I haven't really. You're one of them. I haven't really come across them yet. Yeah, I haven't really come across them. I've been very fortunate in my, in my film experience to have very few uh, experiences where I was working with people who were just horrible. And quickly before I go, because I know I have to go. House of Cards. 
It's a phenomenon. I bet you didn't think it would be. Uh, uh, lots of fans across the world. Who, is, has anyone come up to you that you didn't expect to watch it? Uh, I think Barack Obama's a big fan of it, isn't he? Barack Obama's watched it um, and apparently enjoys it very much, although I've never had a conversation with him about it. Um, uh, Bill Clinton likes it a lot. I love that house of cards. Um, and, uh, and it's been interesting to go sort of around the world and, and see people from, I mean, I went to China recently, and it is huge in China. Uh, which is sort of surprising since, you know, in, in, in season two we have some Chinese relations that don't go all that well. But apparently it's very, it's very, very big in China. Um, so it's very interesting to see um, how the show has been responded to. Fans have been awesome. I'm really very lucky.